Hi everybody, it's Kay Kaltoff and welcome. We are at Stamping to Share this morning here on Facebook and we're gonna do a Facebook Live using the dies. They're called Daffodil Dies and they're in the mini catalog, the January through June mini catalog. And honestly, I was scared to death to use these dies because there were so many of them. I mean, raise your hand if that has ever put you off from trying something new because there just seemed like too many parts and pieces. So um, the card that I'm going to make today, and we're just going to do one today, even though it's a two for Tuesday, I'm not doing two cards because again, there's a lot of parts and pieces to this card. So I thought we should maybe take it a, a little bit slower so I can go a little bit more in depth with the dies and how they work. Um, these are the cards we're going to make. Well, we're just gonna make one, but it's gonna look like this. And they were my top 10 cards for my downline. So every month I try to make a really over the top, well, it's not always over the top, let's be honest. <laughs> it just depends how much time I have. But um, if I have the time, or can find someone to have time for me, I go ahead and create a really beautiful card that I give just to my top 10 team members in sales. So for the month of January, this was their card. We had the demo meeting last week. It was huge amounts of fun. If you have thought about becoming a demonstrator and just wanna dip your toe into it, now is a good time because you can get a starter kit that has $125 worth of stuff for only 99, includes the shipping and handling, and you get two, not one, two free stamp sets of your choice from any current catalog from Stampin' Up! with the exception of celebration items. You can tell I've said this a few times, can't you? Um, during this recruiting special that Stamping Up! is having, and it ends on the 28th of February. So not too many more days left. I would like to add at least one more team member to my personal team of, I think I have 46 uh, personals right now. I'd love to get that up to 47. I'd really like to get it to 50, but I don't know that that's gonna happen by, the Feb by February 28th. But anyway, would love to have you join my group of Creative Crafters Stamping to Share. All right, so let's uh, flip the camera down and we'll look at the cards and then I'll show you the dies and the stamp set and all of that stuff. All right, here's the cards. They're Mother's Day cards, because honestly, you really can't be too early, but you could even easily switch out that sentiment, make it a birthday sentiment or a um, Easter sentiment or whatever you need a daffodil card for. And honestly, when I look out my window this morning, it's a ridiculous snowstorm out there. So um, it's kind of fun to be making daffodil cards, quite honestly. So we will move these out of the way temporarily because we'll have to bring them back in so that I know what I'm doing when I make these cards. But so here's the stamp set, not too intimidating at all, is it? I mean, we've got some really pretty color, some really pretty flowers that we can just color with stamp and blends. We can all handle it. We've got this really cool design, um, two sentiments, some little dots, dots are always fun, and a butterfly not hard. We can do it. Oh my gosh. Then this comes into the picture. Oh, be still my heart. It is thumping around like uh, I've just run a race because I look at this and it makes me want to hyperventilate. It looks like too much work. It looks like too many dies. It looks like I'll never be able to master this. I'm sure some of you can relate, but it's really not that hard. And I'm hoping I'll have some customers. Uh, actually order this bundle after I get done talking about it because it's really not that hard. And I'm going to share with you why it's not that hard. There's, there's duplicate dies in here, everybody. So it just means that you can be more efficient when you put things through your stamp and cut in a boss machine. We have duplicates and I'll be sharing which ones those are in just a second. But the first thing that I would do is once you have your dies out of your packaging, if you put them on a magnet card like I do, this one is from Stampin' Storage, um, take a picture of it because seriously, I refer to that picture all of the time when I'm putting my dies back on to the spots because if I, if I don't have it back on just like this, then I end up with dies that don't fit because like I said, there's a lot of dies in this daffodil die set. So the first thing I want you to know is that the card we're making today actually uses all four stems. 
So we've got four stems right here. One, two, three, four. It uses all four. Two are actually leaves, two are stems. So, so easy. You just put all four stems onto a panel of green. I chose old olive, ran it through the stamp and cotton emboss machine, and you get exactly what you'd expect to get. You get stems. So you get this pretty stem here, you get this little stem here, um, and you get some, some little pieces to put your flowers onto that look like this. So you have two pieces, one going in each direction that you would put your daffodils on. And then you have these little guys, I, I think I've got them upside down here. You've got one that goes this way and one that goes that way. So these are kind of like your leaves and then these are your stems, all right? So just because I um, can only handle so much, I have kind of a low clutter threshold <laughs> because seriously, if I get more than 10 things on my desk, I the fairies come around and take them. So I am going to do something with these right now. All right, so what I'm going to do is we're gonna start putting this card together. And it's not so, so hard because there's not really that many pieces to this card. The main piece here is our card base of Pool Party. And it is five and a half by eight and a half scored at four and one quarter. Not so bad, right? Then the other thing we're going to do is we're gonna grab some layering vellum. This is also in our spring catalog. And I love vellum. You know, I love vellum. Oh my God, every kid, I, I practically every kit, card kit to go that I do has vellum in it somewhere because vellum makes things look elegant. And what I, what I consider myself is I master the easy, elegant option for my customers. And that's why they're my customers because they love easy, elegant cards. So that's what I do. Even though this isn't as easy as my normal easy, I still love to put vellum on my cards. So this is a three by four inch panel of layering designer vellum. I'm gonna hold it up really close so you can see how pretty this is. Look at that. It's got some beautiful little handwriting in there. So nice. Now, if you bring the card in, where you're going to want to attach this vellum is where there are things on the card so that the attachment piece, as in stamp and seal, doesn't show through. So. To do that, we've got our stamp and seal. I know I'm going to have a sentiment right here. So while, I'm, while I've got that on my mind, I'm going to put some stamp and seal there, right about there. Cause I know it's gonna get covered up by my sentiment. I'm gonna have a sentiment right there. I made it kind of high. Oh, well, let me bring it down a little more. We may just have to wing it for that. All right, then I know I'm gonna have all this whole section here covered up. Cause again, if you look at the card, we've got flowers going through that section. So there's kind of a diagonal line down to the middle of the card that you're not gonna see over, you know, through the vellum. So that's where another set or another um, little bit of uh, stamp and seal can go. So we know this is here. I've already got that vellum there. And then down from the top. Oh, oh, keep your fingers crossed that I've done this right. There, I think I did. Now what you're going to do is you're going to set this onto your card so that the right and left are even and the top and bottom, you know, are fairly even. Okay. Then let me show you this card again, because you'll notice there's a feature in here. There's some linen thread. And so Rather than trying to tie all these little sticks with linen thread right off the bat, we're actually going to put all of these on the card just attached at the top so that we can add our linen thread once most of this is down. So when you're just kind of setting it here, just to get you an idea of where you want things to go, and don't worry about those stamps, we can trim all that up later. Um, just kind of lay it loosely down where you think you want things to go. So I know I want one going up this way, one there, one. You'll see in a minute why, why we are only making one card today. So we know that everything needs to kind of look about like this. 
and we want it to come together here in the middle, right? Okay, so let's just, you know, that's the theory. Now let's put, now let's try to put this into practice, which is always a little more challenging. So we're gonna take some glue and just put some glue on the top of the stem like so. And we're going to set it kind of about in the middle, just like this and sticking above the vellum about, you know, half inch or so. Then we're going to take this little piece here. So this is a little stem thing that we've got going on. And we're not gonna actually put glue here yet, but we are gonna put glue on this upper part of the stem. And the reason is, is because one of those uh, daffodil buds has like a really long, nice stem that you can attach behind. So we just want, and we're just really doing this so we get everything kind of lined up. So let's see, where do I wanna bring this? I'm gonna bring this down probably about to there. And just wiggle it so it looks, I don't know, about like that. Then we have another stem that is going to go over here. And you notice how we're keeping this kind of all open over there. Actually, I'm gonna put this, this piece on first. So this is gonna go almost to the top. And again, we wanna keep it all sort of like right in that area is going to be our meeting place. That's where the stems all meet and that's where we're gonna do our tie on. So let me go ahead and add this. And you want it to be, again, about, well, pretty close to that top panel. So that looks pretty good to me. And notice how they're all sort of still coming together right here. Now we've got our final piece here and we can just put glue right on top of this baby because it's gonna be behind a flower. So no worries. And then we'll set this over here because we just want another kind of stem like thing going down. And again, that's gonna get covered up anyway, the, the flower part of it or this, the little bud holder is gonna get covered up. So I don't really care how that looks. Okay, so that's, that's where we're at at this point. You can kind of, you know, if you got yourself a second, you've got, you can wiggle these around just a little bit. And you can, you can make this a little tighter or a little looser, but one way to make it all look good is to just take a scissors, which you would think I would have, but I don't, I'll be right back. Got it. And now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna trim these up so they look nice and neat. There. And don't worry about them being all flippy floppy. We'll take care of that later. So we've got, we've got basically our bouquet going on right here. It looks so good, I love it. All right, now the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to take some linen thread um, where would that be? Oh, here it is. And it's probably, it's two strands of linen thread, but they're cut at about 11 inches. And then we can just slide this up underneath and we're just gonna tie a bow. All right, and so now I'm gonna do my tie on my little bow. And there it is. And then you can kind of fussy fuss with it and get it to look just, you know, exactly how you want it to look. And then you just trim off your excess. Now you probably won't have to, oh, that's why right. I need my, a different scissors. I got my ribbon scissors. You probably wouldn't have to, um... oh, I just lost my train of thought. So busy clipping here. Hold on. You, oh, I know what I was going to say. You probably wouldn't have to have quite 11 inches. I have 11 inches just because I'm doing a video and I didn't want to be all fumbly with it. You know what I mean? Okay, so now, where are we at now? Now we're, we're like, oh, we got the stems on. 
and we got them tied up and they all look cute. And um, at this point, the bottoms are kind of loose. So if you want to, because there's no reason not to, I am going to flip these out and just add a little dot of glue. Can you see how I'm doing this? I'm gonna flip them out, add a little bit of glue to the bottom. And then I can just gently press them down. And then we should have something that stays nice and tidy. There, that also helps hold your vellum down. Okay, so there we are. At this point, it's time for flowers. All right, so we're gonna set this aside for a minute because I wanna show you these flowers. And I also want to show you how it all works. So I'm gonna pull these off. I'll probably, probably not be able to get them back on, but these are actually identical dyes. If I can find, if I can find how they're identical. I know they're identical because they are identical. Let's see, oh yeah, like that. So can you see that's two of the same flower? Then we have the overlay, which is the accent. Let me show you on the card. So you've got pale papaya on the bottom. You've got your pale, or you've got your ma mango melody accent. So this is gonna go with your accent dyes. So again, it's the same, it's two of the same dyes. So when you run this through your stamp and cotton emboss machine, you are going to get two identical flowers. And then the same with this. So all of these are the open face dies and they go on like the bottom, including we have two butterfly pieces. And so if you're going to do butterflies, you want an open face die to run through. Here's another open face die and one more. These are all of your open face dies that you run through with your lighter color. And then you're going to accent with the other colors. So these, these are unique. This ends up kind of going like, I think it's more like this. See, that makes a different, it's a little bit different looking daffodil, but those two are layered together. And then of course, this goes over the top. So you can see how that looks like a daffodil, right? So it's really, really not as hard as I thought it was going to be. Then this is a bud. So this is an open face die with a bud. So then you have your, your other bud that's gonna fit right over the top with your accent flower, your accent paper. All right, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna take all this off. I'm gonna just put it on a little pile over here on my desk because I wanna show you what this looks like. So it looks like this when I did all of those open face dies and I got all of these die cuts. And so you can see these are the same, these are the same. Um, here's that one I was talking about. And then we've got our bud, all right? And the butterfly. So that was, that was all of the open face dies. Then there's the, hold on. Then, so we're gonna move that out of the way. Then you have other dies in here that are gonna be your accent pieces on top of the open face die. So you've got this one and this one. Again, these are exactly the same. Um, if you get them lined up, you can see it's the exact same die. Then you've got one that's obviously for the bud. And then you've got these two. These are easy to figure out because obviously they they get layered up with these, these little open face ones. And again, you get two of them in this big, big set of dies. That just makes it so you don't have to spend so many hours cranking it all out. Then you've got a little butterfly that's, you know, kind of an accent piece. If you want to take the time to really go all out with your butterfly, you've got a little guy here who's also the butterfly body, if you wanna ever get that detailed, which I probably never would. Then you've got this strange looking one and that fits into kind of that, this little thing. So that fits into here, basically. So that's kind of the only weird one that maybe if you looked at it, you really wouldn't know what it's for. And then you have this that sort of looks like an airplane propeller. 
And that also is kind of one that fits onto this once you get it all cut out. All right. All right, so I'm gonna move that out of the way and then I'm gonna show you the mango melody that I die cut with all of these. And you have all of these little pieces. So as you can see, I, just like I told you, we've got you know the same kind of thing going on. So if you grab your little flower piece that looks like this, you can add one of these and it fits perfectly. And you just glue that into place. So it's, and like I said, it's, it's not as hard as it looks. Once you get those open face pieces cut out and then you get your accent detail pieces cut out, it's pretty easy to figure out where everything goes. Cause it all, well, I say that now. It all pretty much fits. Okay, there we go. See, it all pretty much fits, just like you would expect it to. All right, so we're going to move this out of the way. I'm gonna move this all over here. We're not actually going to glue those together because believe it or not, I think you can do, uh-oh. I just heard a die fall on the floor. <laughs> Who knows if I'll ever find it again. All right, let me get these things out of the way. Uh, I got to remember to look for that now when the video is over. All right, and I'm going to show you everything put together. So I did glue all of these little pieces together. So we won't have to take the time to actually glue them together on the video, but it's like I showed you, it's not as hard as it looks. So if you remember... There's two pieces like this. So once you put your accents on, you wanna layer those together after the accents are on. So just layer them together for your backing and you have something that looks like this. And then this piece is going to be layered. And I did leave this apart so I could show you how to do that. So that's gonna go like that. So to put them together, you can use glue or you can use a glue dot. So just, just because I got the glue dot so handy, I'm going to put a glue dot on here. So I've got my glue dot on this little propeller thing. I think I'm gonna go this way with it. And then I can take this kind of funky looking one and we'll just, Add it right over the top. And then we have, we have a daffodil that looks like this. And, it's, and then of course, once you put this piece over the top of that, you get your daffodil flower. All right, so I've got my two daffodil flower heads right here. I've got kind of the, the little pads that they attach to. And then also I've got my bud right like that. I did have the butterflies and I put those onto the inside panel already. So the inside panel is going to be basic white, three and three fourths by five inches. Give a lot of pool party around the sides to give it that accent. And then on the other side, I got, I got moving butterflies here, hold on. I've got some butterflies attached. So I already put those two together. So I'm just going to take some stamp and seal. We're gonna put this onto the inside panel of our card. So just set it in there like so, press down, and this is the inside panel, easy peasy. Then let's go ahead and do these guys. So the first one we're going to put on is going to be up here and I think we should put this on with dimensionals. So I'm going to grab my dimensionals and we're gonna add a few. We'll add three. And then we're just gonna set this right here. Um, I wanna make sure my little stem is showing. So I'm gonna probably bring it down a little 
lower. And then I have lots of stems showing up here. And then this little guy is gonna go right here. So on the bottom, I'm gonna put a glue dot, but I want the top to, to pop up sort of 3D. So I'm going to add, I'm gonna grab mini dimensional and put that right here at the top. And then we can set that like this. And then we have a flower that is already on dimensionals, but then this top piece is also on a dimensional. So it just makes it, I don't know, it just makes, gives it a little more 3D effect. I really love that look. Then obviously this one is gonna go here because remember we left that open so that it could go there. So I'm going to attach it with a glue dot. And then on this side, I'm gonna add actual glue. So we're going for double duty here. We're gonna slide it under and it just fits in there just so perfectly. So press it down, press it down. And it looks like this. And then we've got this piece and you saw me attach it with, um, you know, we saw the two pieces get attached just a minute or two ago. And then I'm going to take dimensionals to put this piece on, but these are a little bit smaller flowers. So I'm going to use my mini dimensionals again. And then I'll add a bigger dimensional right through here. Gives it a little more staying power too, in case your mini glue dot comes loose or if you didn't burnish it down enough. And then this is just going to set in like right here. And it doesn't even, we don't really need an official uh, stem for it. It just, it's going to look good just like this. So maybe tuck it under if you want, just like that. And then we've got this guy and we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to grab a mini glue dot for the bottom. And then we're going to take a mini dimensional for the top. And then we're gonna set that right here, going off to the right. And isn't that beautiful? Oh my gosh, I just love it. Now, the next thing we need to do is add our sentiment. So on the cards that I did in advance, you can see I've got a sentiment here, Happy Mother's Day. And I am going to do that. I'm gonna get this out of the way for a second. I've got some tuxedo black ink. And my last piece of paper that I'm going to work with here on this card is a one by three inch panel of basic white. And then I'm going to ink up the Happy Mother's Day. And I'm gonna stamp it to the left-hand side. I'm gonna get white on white doesn't straight, does it? So we're gonna stamp it over here. And you know what, I gotta bring this in because oh goodness, I can't see where I'm stamping, but I gotta back up in case I really goof it up. And I got it crooked. I'll show you how I would do it take my scissors and I cut up like this and that's going to be um, my sentiment. But like I said, I couldn't get my head right over the top. So I've got my backup ready and we're going to add this to our card and we're going to put that one on with dimensionals too. So the dimensionals are really getting a workout today. We're going to add some dimensionals here. I'm adding lots of dimensionals because I want it to be super nice and sturdy. And then here's our card. And because I put my stamp and seal a little bit high, I'm gonna go a little bit higher with this particular sentiment than I did on my sample card. 
doesn't matter as long as you cover it up. I mean, who's going to know? So it looks like this. And then for the crowning, for the beautiful crowning touch, we've got some polished dots. And the polished dots kind of come in a very lightly tinted, let me see if I can grab. Can you see a lightly tinted blushing bride color or petal pink color? And then the other color, I just don't think you're seeing this. Hold on. It just doesn't show up on camera. The other color is sort of a frosted white. So today we're going to use the frosted white. And I'm going to put a large, let me grab my take your pick tool. I'm going to take a large one and I'm going to set that right here, right there. And then I'm going to take a small one and I think I'll set that up here. And then one more small one and we'll set that right here. Perfect. So here is the completed card. I hope you've enjoyed this video today. It's so much fun for me to do these. And this was, like I mentioned, the top 10 card for my downline members. Again, give it a give some consideration to becoming a member of my Creative Crafters team. We have quite a nice size group and we would love for you to be a part of it. You don't have to sell like I sell. You can just join, test it out, get your products at cost. And then woo, if you end up, you know, accidentally selling something and discovering that you like it, I certainly have many years of experience to help you move on from that point as I have been a Stampin' Up! demonstrator since 2007. Have a great day, everyone. I truly appreciate you and I hope you have a wonderful day. I will be back tomorrow with a one for Wednesday and I don't know what I'm making yet. I just might have to keep on working with this daffodil stamp set, but we'll see how it goes. Have a great day, everyone. I truly appreciate you. Bye-bye.